Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. Bridge flight video creates controversy and concern. DJI set to open first UAS arena in Japan. And India establishes drone regs. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world with more than 195,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. There's a pretty intense drone video on YouTube produced by Rotor Riot and shot in Canada which is not all that sympathetic to all things unmanned. The pilot flies aggressively and at a high speed in very close proximity along, over, and below a bridge heavily populated by moving vehicles, who haven't a clue the potential hazard of the quad should something go wrong. Yes, it looks cool and exciting, and the pilot definitely has some skills, and it looks that way because everything went right and nothing went wrong. One glitch in the drone could have been in someone's windshield, but that was luck and not skill. One of A&N boss Jim Campbell's test pilot school instructors once opined that what truly separates a skilled pilot from the rest were those flyers who did not rely on good luck to avoid having to use their expert skills to avoid real trouble. One pilot, one accident, and the attendant public outcry could result in extensive and excessive new regs for us all. Chad Boudreau, AMA Government Affairs Director, notes that no one should be flying in careless and reckless manner. Safety is a high priority for our organization, and we do not condone this type of operation. We'll have a follow-up when more info is available, but in the meantime, please fly safely and carefully. In the next drone minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. Last July, a drone supposedly transgressed controlled airspace under the guidance of NADS, the organization providing air traffic navigation services to aircraft flying through UK controlled airspace and at numerous UK and international airports. As a result, NADS put together showing the effect that his incident Austin Sibley created. It's worth taking a look. Police in Ledyard, Connecticut have arrested a man who refused to stop flying his drone over a youth football game Saturday, causing a delay of the game. The person arrested was 31-year-old Daquan Knight of New London, Connecticut. The arrest is the first in the town involving an unmanned aircraft. Authorities say game officials initially asked Knight to land his drone, but he refused. The recent announcement of the President's Drone Integration Initiative has the aviation community all abuzz. The National Business Aviation Association has put its toe in the waters, as Heidi Williams, NBAA's Director for Air Traffic Services and Infrastructure, emphasized the association will closely monitor the integration program. We intend to be an active part of this process as it moves forward. We must ensure the interests and concerns of our members and other UAS stakeholders receive proper consideration, with continued emphasis on safe integration of UAS into airspace shared with manned aircraft. One of the reasons why the Aero News crew likes working with the AMA is the quality of people we find among this organization. A group that ANN CEO Jim Campbell first joined in his early teens nearly 50 years ago. Here's an example of AMA leadership discussing the highs and lows of dealing with hard politics and their fights for their members' best interest. Check out Aero Political Chat AMA on the ups and downs of ATC privatization fight on the AMA Drone Report YouTube channel. That was our Drone Minute, now back to the rest of the news. Earlier this month, DJI opened its first UAS arena in Japan, called DJI Arena by J Drone Tokyo. A variety of capabilities and features are offered at this arena, including a flying area that is equipped with safety nets and an adjustable circuit for those that are interested in testing their flying skills. This area also gives UAS enthusiasts a place to fly year-round, regardless of weather conditions outside. 
The arena also has a retail store, which will showcase the company's consumer, professional, and enterprise products, giving customers the opportunity to purchase the latest technology released by DJI. Technical support will also be offered. The 535-square-meter arena is managed and operated by authorized dealer Japan Circuit in partnership with DJI Japan. Japan Circuit CEO Tetsuhiro Sakai says we are extremely excited to partner with DJI to launch the first DJI Arena in Japan. The new DJI Arena will not only serve as a gathering place for drone enthusiasts, but also help us reach new customers and anyone interested in learning about this incredible technology. The Arena will be open for individual and group bookings, corporate event rentals, and it will serve as a venue for DJI's new pilot experience program. Workshops will also be hosted at the Arena. The nation of India says it wants to take advantage of the potential of unmanned aerial vehicles and is set to create its first set of regulations covering the growing industry. So far, it is illegal for the general public to fly drones without the approval of government authorities because of concern over public safety. But the new regs issued by their Civil Aviation Ministry and the Directorate General of Civil Aviation allow for a solid foundation for future drone pilots and operations. DGCA has created five classifications for UAVs. Nano, less than or equal to 250 grams. Micro, greater than 250 grams and less than or equal to 2 kilograms. Mini, greater than 2 kilograms and less than or equal to 25 kilograms. Small, greater than 25 kilograms and less than or equal to 150 kilograms. And large, greater than 150 kilograms. Nanodrills will not require registration, but larger vehicles need registration and the issuance of a unique identification number. While drones in excess of 2 kilograms will require an air defense clearance. The draft also advises drone operators to inform local police authorities about their operations, even if they are drones from the nano and micro categories. Some pilots operating larger drones will require approved training. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero newsnet And more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.